So the final stage in the pre-visualization process before you start modeling in Maya um, is to get those images in that you modeled, uh, that you drew, sorry. Um, now again, this is an older model of mine and these are slightly different images than I was drawing. You can see they're actually the sketchy, the sketchier or versions of the sketchier images. But the image planes are the same size as yours. Um, and you just have to bring them into Maya much in the same way you did when you did the eye um, and you put an image on a plane um, but also uh, sort of more akin to the way you did it when you did the ear you brought in the side and front view of the ear put them on image planes uh, using the front and side camera and then they were visible in the perspective view if you wanted to see them there and here so Let's go through this process now. Just ignore this part right now. I'm just going to delete these image planes. And I'll warn you right now that often, hopefully this doesn't happen to you, but often when you bring image planes into Maya, they're sized very strangely. Even though these two images are the same size, uh, 1024 by 1024, um, they come in at strange sizes for some reason. So you should have saved them in the text folder of your uh, modeling project. Now we've set projects before, so I expect that you'll be able to do that. Um, so we want to bring them now in as image planes. So I'm just going to double check and make sure my project is set. So mine is in sort of a strange location, but and with a lot of other stuff, this is a, a different model I was working on. So, mindset projects, term recon. So, I'm going to choose that. Now, it's these two views, front and side view, that we want to look at right now. Now, your side view might have the front of the skull in it, might have the your front view might have the side of the skull in it. Either way, um, you want to bring in the appropriate image to match the skull. So, you can see here in the side view, for example, my uh, this green box is still here. I don't really need that anymore, so I want to go to View, Camera Settings, No Gate, and I've already turned it off in my front view. So to bring in the image planes, you have to do it once in the front view, once in the side view. So you go to View, the panel menu view here, Image Plane, Import Image, and it should take you to the appropriate text folder. Now mine are in here somewhere. Yep, so I want the front view now. I'm going to open that. And so you can see it brings my image in, but at a very strange scale. And as a matter of fact, I just went through this process once before recording this. Um, and you can see when you bring it in, it brings up the image plane in the channel box over to the right. It has a width and a height. They're equal because this is a square document, 1024 by 1024 pixels. Uh, but when I brought it in last time, it came in at 96 by 96. So I'm not sure exactly why, um, but we'll just have to adjust it so it fits. So there is a little uh, maneuvering you have to do at this point. Um, so some trial and error. So in this width and height uh, of the image plane. Now if you lose this image plane um, channel box, these attributes, you can always go to view, image plane, image plane attributes, and then open up. There should only be one in there. And you'll find in this window the same information. So here's the width and height here. So you can do it here in the channel box or you can do it here in the attribute editor. So through some trial and error, I found that it should be 36 by 36. So at this point, we just need to line it up. And so the these values here for center, X, Y, and Z. It's actually easier to use them here in the channel box, but if you need to find them here in the attribute editor, when you have three columns, it's always going to be X, Y, and Z in order. If we go into the perspective view, if we select this image plane in the perspective view, you can see it brings up the attributes for the front camera. If you just scroll down here in the channel box, You'll see Inputs Image Plane 1. You can click on that, scroll down, and you'll see all these controls here again. 
So th this is the easier place to control this. So we need to obviously move the image over a little bit. So down here in the bottom corner gives you an idea of some of the directions in the scene. X is to the right and left. In this case, Y is to the top and bottom. Z is towards you and away from you. So here we want to move X. It's a negative 2 right now. I'm just going to set that to 0. Actually, that's pretty good. Um, and center Y. So to play with it a little bit so the tissue depth markers line up. Now I know when I did this drawing originally, I, I shaved off part of Gonion here so I know that they're not going to match exactly. But yours should match your tissue depth markers. And you might have to do some playing around here. Now strangely, and this is probably pure coincidence, the width and height is 36 and the center Y is 3.6. Your values will be different. So don't try and just type in the values that I give you and wonder why it doesn't work. Yours will be different. And hopefully the image will come in and just fit. However, it's unlikely. So the last thing we have to do, if we go into the perspective view, we can see that this is intersecting with our skull. So we want to push it back in the Z direction. So center Z. If you click on the name in the attribute editor, the middle mouse drag in the scene, you can just push it back this way. Or you can type in a value like minus 12. So minus 12 is away from the camera or back in the scene. Now it's going to be a little bit different for you because your skull is set up turned at a 90 degree angle from this one. So that's pretty good. I think if we look here, that all fits and I'm happy with that. So now we have to do the same thing here in the um, side view. We're going to go to view. Let me enlarge this. We're going to go to view image plane, import image. Now it should take you directly to the text folder. Mine didn't even though you saw that I set the project originally. It happens. It's a little buggy. So Durham side, so this one, mine is called, whatever you've called yours. So now this one's in front of our skull so it's kind of blocking our view. So we can go into the perspective view right away. And again when I brought this one in last time it was tiny. It was 9 by 9. Now it's 49 by 49. There must be a reason, the way you've got the camera set or something. Hmm. Actually, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I'm just going to delete that and bring it in again. Now just ignore this for a moment. I'm just experimenting a little bit. I'm just going to change my view here. We'd import that image again. Hopefully it takes you to the text folder, but if it doesn't, navigate there. See, I changed my view settings to see if it would bring it in at the appropriate size, but now it's brought it in a totally different size, 68 by 68. I'm just going to zoom in and see if it does something different. Eighteen by eighteen, so it seems to have something to do with how close you are to the um, the model. So I would suggest when you bring it in that you um, maybe you do want to open up the uh, resolution gate, camera settings, resolution gate. Hit F like we did before when we wanted to center the skull. In the image. Let's see if that will bring it in. I, I, in my case, I don't think that it will simply because I modeled this in a slightly different way than you. I'm just deleting that image plane. I'm going to try it one more time just to see what kind of different result I get. So that brought it in at. So I lost the selection, so I can just select the image in the perspective view, go down to image plane 2, and that brought it in at 45 by 45. So again, different value, still not right. So I'm pretty sure this should be 36 by 36. That looks right, and it should be lined up with the other one. Now it's on the wrong side, depending on what side you're going to model on, but I'm going to push mine in 
center X, I'll say minus 12, should go on the other side of the skull. And now here I just have to center it so it matches. So you can see center Y, it's got to go up a little bit. And then center Z, it's got to go back and forward a little bit to get it right. So Y is too high now. So this is admittedly a little bit tricky because you're changing scale, which will change position, and then you'll change position, which might necessitate a change in scale. But that looks good. Looks like all these tissue depth markers in the midline are matching. It's matching the drawing of the skull, or the model of the skull. So now the last thing that I would ask you to do, now this should all match up, but just to make sure, I'm just going to turn off all these models in the display layer. I like to create a plane that I can just move up and down and make sure everything matches up, similar to what we did, I think, with the ear early on. So if I just go to create, oh, those menus aren't working, create um, NURBS primitive plane or you can do a poly primitive plane it doesn't matter you want interactive creation turned off so it creates a little plane in the middle of my world plane just a flat piece of geometry if I scale it up and then just move it around I just see I want to make sure the top of the head the drawings lines up that's good I want to make sure the chin lines up in both drawings they do that's good corner of the mouth, they line up, good, nose, yep, corners of the eye, good. Now, I didn't expect that they wouldn't because both of these images are the same size, I scaled them to the same size, I placed them appropriately to match, but you don't want to go ahead with the modeling until you're sure that both images will line up. So once you're done with that, then you're all ready to start modeling. Um, we'll work on that next, and I'll give you a base model to start from. Something, this is a little more advanced than what you'll get, but something like this. A head that can be modified to match any shape, and you'll take it further to something like this and build out the nose. But you'll start with a base shape similar to this, a little less work done in the eye and around the head so you can shape it yourself, but you're not starting from scratch. What I'm more interested in is taking a base model and having you um, realize what you've pre-visualized in a 3D space. Okay, so that's all you need to have done. Not this model, forget this. Uh, you have to turn in your Maya document with your eye, skull, your tissue depth markers, and your two image planes in place in your scene. And submit that to me along with your Photoshop files and your two um, uh, rendered out uh, images from Photoshop to JPEGs. Now you'll have to turn in the whole Maya project. So you have the project folder that has the Maya folder in it and the text folder. That way it will make the link to these image files. I'll talk to you about this in class, but you have to make sure you give me all that stuff. Thanks.